Happy days, happy people, and welcome to another anatomy lecture with Ulu Yoga. My name is Cody, and today we're going to be speaking about fascia and fascial play. So now some of you might know what fascia is, and I hope that you do, because we're going to be expanding on some basic knowledge of fascia that I hope you already have. If not, I will briefly just go through what fascia is, how it works in the body, or rather how we think it works in the body, and then we will begin to expand with some concepts and speak about some practices we can bring into our yoga classes as teachers and as students that can help give us greatest mobility within fascia and basically just learn how to use it to bring more fluidity, more mobility, and just honestly less stress in the body. But let's just first define fascia for a few seconds. So, brief history of fascia, it was a part of the body that we believed to just be in a singular location, uh, a single sheath of fascia uh, that we thought to be just in the abdominal region. But then we realized that fascia itself is something that interconnects through the entire body. Um, and when I mean entire, it's entire. It's every single bone, muscular fiber, Everything is intertwined with this net of fascia. Again, just the best analogy that I can think of is if you think of an orange, right? The fruit, that thing that you eat. And when you open it up and peel the skin, there's a white pit that is like this netting that surrounds the entire orange and is just between the skin and the orange, but is also intertwined um, between the orange itself and the fibers of the orange. This is essentially what fascia is, uh, exactly the same thing. We have our skin on the outside, then in between the skin and pretty much where the muscle starts uh, and the inner starts is this fascial sheath, but then it also runs intertwined with it. So this is why fascia sometimes can be a little bit difficult to speak about in terms of its properties and where it starts, where it ends, and how to access it in the body. Uh, but we're gonna do our best. All right, the next thing we're gonna speak about are some fascia movement protocols. Um, so I'm gonna call my amazing friend, Monica, to come up. And uh, she's going to do a little bit of movements um, just to kind of help you understand, again, how fascia works and some things that you can do in your daily practice are very simple, to, they're pretty much warm-ups more than anything else, but also to understand fascia a little bit more. So if you could just come stand in your mountain pose facing towards the camera, awesome. So we're gonna start by speaking about the kinetic chains. So kinetic chains are using the fascial binding points that I spoke about in a more fluid way, right? So you're using the ankles, the IT band, the pelvic crossover, the shoulder girdle, um, the neck and the head, to create a kinetic chain of movement um, that then starts to release fascia in these areas too and also just bring awareness to them as well. So to create a kinetic chain, you just start one body part at a time. So we'll start just with your neck. So you can just start to move your neck in any way you like. Good. And you can do this in multiple different ways, right? So you can gain awareness of one part and then you can relax come into neutral again and go to the next, go to the shoulders, so just moving the shoulders however you like. Again, very nice and slow movements. Again, this is, these are warm-up movements. And then coming back to neutral, going to the hips, just moving the hips however you like. Good, so you'll notice that Monica's using her shoulders as well. Uh, so what you want to try and learn how to do is isolate the hip movements away from the shoulder. So you're just doing this. So just very subtle movements of the hips. So we're not using the shoulders to move the hips and just isolating that kinetic chain. Good, then you go down into the IT band. How we access the IT band more is through the knee. So then doing knee movements as well. And the best way to do that without touching the ankles is lifting up the knee and just allowing for movement. Or if you want to, you can keep the heels down 
and move the knees like this. Good. And then go into the ankles and then just play with the ankle movement. So this is isolated kinetic chain movement. Now ideally what we want to do is learn how to move the entire body with all of these kinetic chains at once. Uh, so we're going to see how Monica does. And uh, we're going to start with the neck. So start moving your neck. Good. And then while also moving your neck, start moving your shoulders. This also builds really good body awareness. And then while also moving your shoulders, start moving your hips. <laughs> And while also moving your hips, start moving your knees. Yeah, it's kind of like a nice little fluid dance. And also your ankles, so coming onto your toes. Good. So that is what we want to try and aim to learn how to do, is to first isolate and then also create this entire movement of the whole body, where everything from the shoulders to the hips and the neck is moving sometimes simultaneously, sometimes not. Um, then you can also obviously bring your hands in as well and start using your, your wrists to move as well and just finding elasticity. And this is where the play perspective comes in, is when you're creating these kinetic chains, is you start to learn what different things feel like. You start to learn that if I bring my arm out here and maybe drop in my knees, I can create an elastic effect in my upper torso. And then that helps me bring myself forward again and finding these different ways of moving the body and finding different bodily awarenesses is gonna, one, just keep your body very healthy. Um, it's gonna increase your mind awareness and it's gonna start to release fascia on a very deep way. You'll feel how fluid you feel afterwards um, from these movements, because there's also not tension. You'll notice that these movements aren't like contracting a muscle. It's very much moving with the natural flow of the body and creating elasticity in the body and using the elasticity of fascia to move your body rather than contracting the muscles. All right, next thing we're gonna do um, is cross body stimulation. So cross body stimulation is when you're just moving your body in a way where there's twists, essentially. Um, so if you want to, you can just bring your left arm over. Yep, reach up nice and high, good. And then step your left foot out, yeah. And then create a nice little twisting motion. So imagine that this, the tip of your fingertip and the tip of your toe are attached by an elastic band and you're trying to pull that elastic band. This is creating a cross body movement, right? Because you're literally crossing over your body and then you can do the same with the other way. And then see how, again, you can get elasticity from this. See how maybe if you twist your hips a little bit more in or more out, what happens? So if you twist your hips in, you'll notice you get less elasticity. Right, because I can just go all the way to the other side. If I let my hips drop in, I get this cross body movement because my hips are pressing in the opposite direction. Beautiful. So that's one way to do it. Any twist that you do is pretty much a cross body movement. Um, another way to do it is reverse that by bringing the leg behind you. So bring your right foot behind you, place it down, and then bring your arm up. And then from here, you can come into a nice side body stretch, grabbing onto the wrist and just pulling down. And again, seeing what happens when you play with the hips, when you straighten the legs, and when you press down with that foot. Beautiful. The next thing we're gonna speak about are a heel to toe movement. So heel toe, like I said, the Achilles tendon is something that is very much controlling a lot of the fascial bundling in the body. And when we can start to release here, we can start to release everywhere. And because it's very difficult to do this with the crown of your head, because your head's very sensitive and also up in space, um, it's easier to do with your body, with your bottom body and release down first. So you're just going to stand in a mountain pose. You're going to flex your toes up and you're just going to rock back and forward. Yeah. And every time you rock forward, you can allow for this little hip movement backwards just to keep you in balance. This simple motion done repetitively over time, maybe just for a minute or two minutes, is going to definitely start to release the fascia and create a, a very subtle but then eventually deep stretch 
of your entire lower system. And it's also going to help with the upper. Now to help increase this, you can start providing a little bit more of a hip thrust and allowing yourself to contract a little bit more down. So when you come down, you come up, and then when you go back, you go as far back as you can. So trying to create like a little curve of the body. This creates a lot more fascial release now because we're tapping into the back. We're using the arms. And yeah, if you fall forward, it's fine too. You also have something to get used to because you're balancing. And you will find that you know where your, your state of balance is. You can also do this from a forward fold. Uh, so if you were to forward fold. Good. And then place your fingertips out in front of you to help you. Exactly. And just rock back and forth here. This is a good way to really isolate the lower body movements and find that fluidity. Okay, the final thing we're going to do is full stretch contraction and full stretch expansion. Um, so we're going to start by the full stretch and then go into the full stretch expansion and go into the full stretch contraction afterwards. What this means is finding the biggest range of motion you can in your elasticity and then slowly bring it into a contractive state, going into your full contraction and then bringing it up. There's definitely different levels of this as well. Um, we'll go through two levels. We'll go through the standing level and then the full contraction level. Um, so for, for the expansion, you're just going to become a star. So you're gonna, your feet can kind of stay where they are though, to be honest. Um, this is kind of the, the more moderate version. You're gonna lift up, go as wide as you can. And then as you exhale, you're just gonna contract in, bend the knees, bring the elbows in, and become a little bit more flaccid. And then same thing coming up. Use your breath here as well. Inhale and exhale. Again, control it back. And one more time, inhale, and exhale, control it back, good, and release. Now we're going to go into full contraction and expansion. Um, if you have any blood pressure things, just be a little bit careful here because we're going to be going from a very big, wide, highly pressured position to a very, very small position and then back again. So if you have high blood pressure, do this very, very slowly, very slowly, especially when you're coming up. The going down, not so much, but definitely the coming up. Um, so we're going to start again. This one, you can also allow for your feet to move a little bit. Come into a big star shape. So a big star shape, as wide as you can. Even flex your toes. Go big, as big, like imagine like you're trying to reach everything. Even allow for like a more, more, like someone's pulling you and your chest and everything's being stretched. There we go, yes. So the biggest opening you can imagine. Inhale, and as you exhale, start to contract. You can even move your feet in and bend your knees. Go all the way down, it's like a seated child's pose. Drop your hips. And as relaxed as possible here. Good, and then now this is where you need to be careful and where you need to be very mindful in your movement is the coming back. So inhale, on your inhale, slowly come back, but very slowly relax the neck, keep the chin down. Good, vertebra by vertebra. Find your neutral, and then once you found the neutral, expand again. Inhale, and one more contraction, as deep as you can. Beautiful and relax. And those are the movements that we're going to be doing. So this one is exactly what I was speaking about with the elastic band. So we're bringing ourselves as wide as possible and then we're gently guiding ourselves all the way into our most contractive states, all the way to the ground even. You could even come into a full child's pose if you like. And then you're bringing yourself back out of that as Again, this is where the mindfulness comes in and where you start to learn how to use your muscles to guide yourself. As you start to bring yourself back, and there's a very intuitive way usually if you allow it, 
that brings you back up and then your neck comes up and you find your neutral position and then you stretch it out again. Um, fascia loves this, your body's going to love this, it's going to build a lot of this kinesthetic awareness that I've been speaking about and it's also going to be a great way for you to bring more mindfulness into your practices, into your classes, uh, more body awareness and just to learn how to use the body as the organism that it is. Uh, again, we've been gifted with this, this level of consciousness where we can be aware of ourselves uh, in a way that is seemingly different to other animals and organisms. And with this awareness, we can start to learn a bit more um, through experience and through um, combining intuition with analysis. And so use this, these, these analytics that I've just given you for fascia, these properties, and experiment with your body and see how everything that I've explained now to you feels in your body. And if it does feel awkward at first, this is okay. It's because your brain isn't used to it. It's like learning a new movement pattern, right? The first time you did anything before, there's awkwardness. But what I want you to take note of is where your awkwardness is, especially in the body. Um, so if it's in your hips, or if it's in your shoulders, or if it's in your neck, and you find it hard to isolate that part of the body, or you find that that part of the body is most rigid, this should be a part of your body that you want to bring more awareness to, that you will need to release a little bit more. It might need mo more mobility or might need more stability. Depends. Whatever it is, you just need to bring awareness to it and then the rest will follow. Um, and that's why this is such a great exercise. Um, and that's pretty much it. So play with the movements that you do. Play knowing that fascia works in a very intelligent way and it knows what to do and there is a very deep level of surrender that we need here. So even in these areas of the body that might be rigid, it could just be because there's a surrender that you need. Um, there is definitely a crossover into psychology, 100%, and I speak about it a little bit in fascial bundling, where those areas of release are probably due to some sort of emotional, I don't know, trauma or emotional tension um, or it could be just a stress thing or an anxiety 100 percent they're going to form in the fascial bundling of your body and so it is going to be a limiting factor in your movement sometimes and it's also going to be why you feel tension in certain areas of your body more than others is because of the emotions and the psychology that you're going through um, so keep that in mind as well if you are experiencing emotional releases or if you just don't understand why you're not gaining mobility in there, it might be an, a deeper inner reflection that you need to look on because uh, everything is intertwined and everything is connected. Um, and apart from that, enjoy, have fun, experience your movements in a more playful way, um, use this elasticity of movements that maybe you've seen contemporary dancers move with or even gymnasts, um, but use it in a way that's a bit more healthy in the sense that even if we're being elastic, we want to be controlled in the comeback. Um, sometimes we can allow for big explosive movements, but know that that's going to be causing destruction and deterioration in your body, and uh, it will cause pain eventually. So this one, the more big explosive movements in moderation, this one for longevity, right? The more controlled your movements are, these types of movements are going to keep your body in a state of longevity, uh, more so than the more destructive movements. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you are at all interested in learning more about yoga or becoming a yoga teacher, then check out our online trainings or even go to one of our live trainings in Copenhagen and Bali. And if you feel like there's something that's urging you to do it, then why not? Follow your flow and keep being awesome. See you soon.